every single narrative on the face of the planet, every story you've ever heard, has some basic elements that are in place that make it a good story. Um, the first thing is that there are major characters and there are minor characters. A story with just one character gets pretty boring pretty fast. So we need major ones we're focused on and minor ones that kind of move the story along. Uh, there is a problem coming. Every single story has a problem that develops in it. And then the problem gets worse. And then sometimes the characters make it worse. And sometimes there are just things happening that make it worse. And then finally, there's solutions that fail, and um, there's lots of emotions. So maybe if one solution fails and everybody gets upset, you know, or maybe if one solution fails and everybody gets hopeful, you know, so we go through this process of following the characters along, trying to solve this thing. And then the problems get solved, and then everybody learns something about life. So let's look at some stories that you're familiar with um, and kind of see how this compares. So let's just look at Harry Potter to begin with. In Harry Potter, there are major characters and there are minor characters. In fact, there are three major characters here. Um, and there's a problem coming. And the problem is always Voldemort is coming. Voldemort's going to do something, right? And there's lots of little problems along the way that have to do with that. But generally, there's one big problem coming. So there are characters who make the problem worse and sometimes accidentally make it worse, or sometimes on purpose make it worse. Um, and then there's failed solutions. Um, in the case of Harry Potter, sometimes th like they'll, they'll win temporarily, but then Voldemort always comes back, something worse, something you know harder. So the solutions fail, and there's lots of emotions. Like, uh, you know, Hermione gives us hope, you know, in whenever ever she fails, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig deeper, I'm gonna try harder, you know. But other characters uh, make us feel angry when they fail. Um, so each failure brings new emotion. Um, and then finally at the end of each book or each movie or the whole series, the problem gets solved and everybody learns something about life. So Snape taught us one thing about life and the Weasley brothers, they taught us something else. You know, and that's what made this Harry Potter franchise so great because every single book followed this formula. And so even if we look at a different franchise, we look at the Star Wars franchise, and I know there's some Star Wars fans out there, in this franchise there are some major characters and some minor characters. In fact, what makes Star Wars such a beautiful, uh, such a beautiful story overall is that the minor characters rise up and become major characters. So there's all these people coming in and coming out. And in every story there's a problem coming, and it typically has to do with the dark side. Um, and there are characters who make the problem worse, either intentionally or unintentionally. And there's failed solutions, and there's always lots of emotions, right? And, you know, in Rogue One, like, the failure was that she died. But it ultimately, it led to a success, right? And so the, you get it wrapped up in all these emotions, and it's, that's why it's so great. And it, now, what's great about Star Wars is the problem never really gets solved, so there can always be another movie. But we always learn something about life. You know, I like I like what Anakin teaches us about life, and I like what Obi Wan teaches us about life. It's all it's all quite different based on the character. And of course, your favorite. Don't pretend you don't watch the show. Don't pretend there are major characters and there are minor characters, right? And there's always a problem coming in every single episode. It's kind of a different problem. But guess what? It always has to do with plankton. Am I right? And so Plankton always fails, um, but the general emotion for this kid show, it, it's happy. You always feel generally happy at the end or you're laughing at somebody because it's a kid show. But the problem gets solved and we all learn something about life. And I don't know what Pearl learns about life, but I think she always learns daddy helps her out. Whatever. But you can kind of see that the basic thing is set up. That's the basics of every story. But honestly, nobody really cares, right? Nobody goes to see Harry Potter and says, Ooh, I wonder who's going to solve the problem this time, right? No, nobody, nobody thinks like that. Nobody watches SpongeBob and says, Who will make the problem worse? Like, that's not how you think about stories. What you really care about stories is what you're going to learn today. The advanced part of writing, what moves you up to be a better writer, is the, the human part. What people care about is seeing themselves in the story and relating to parts of the narrative. This is what you're gonna learn today. So some people call this zooming in and zooming out. So if you've ever used a camera in your life, you can kind of understand that analogy. Like I zoom in on this detail and now I'm gonna zoom out and look at the whole picture again, right? And that analogy kind of helps some people. Um, other people like to call it small moments, 
right? Where they just, they don't talk about the whole day. They talk about one tiny detail of that whole day that represents the whole day. Um, sure, any way you want to think about it, that's fine. But I'm going to give you a few examples so then you can start to write um, like an advanced writer as well. So first, I want you to imagine your character and then we're going to develop that image. So whatever character you want, maybe the character is you, maybe the character is a dog, any old character. So just think of one character. You're going to draw that character. And then you're going to draw or describe the place that they sleep. It is very, very important about a character, the place they sleep, because there is a vast difference between someone who sleeps in a giant princess fluffy bed, five mattresses high, in perfect silence while violins play them to sleep, and someone who sleeps on the street at night with the asphalt and cardboard to keep them warm. The place that you sleep tells a lot about you. And that is totally true of characters and books. So I want you to write that. I want you to draw and describe the front door of their house. And the, the same thing if we want to do the extremes again, the front door of a castle is massively different than the front door of a homeless shelter. There are numbers on the door. There are colors on the door. There is a specific kind of handle. Are there plants around the door? Is there a welcome mat? What does the welcome mat say? So just push yourself and try to imagine what is the first thing they see when they walk in where they live. Um, and finally, I want you to draw and describe some of the objects the person owns. So if you're, if you're drawing this out, what, what's in their hand, what's on their feet, what's near their feet, what's on the bookshelf, some, just a few objects to get your brain going. Um, and then also it's important to describe how the character takes their meals. Right? If, it's, if I'm describing a dog on the floor, if I throw their food on the floor in a bowl, that's totally different than if I take the dog and I put him near me while I'm eating and I, and I put his food on the table. Like That's two totally different animals, two totally different characters that are going to develop. Okay? So each of these things, now you can do every single one of them if you want, or you can pick like three of them. But what I want you to do is I want you to pause this video for just a second. And you can pause it looking at the screen, and I want you to do at least three of these to a character. Pause and work. So the task you're going to do right now is you're going to write about one part of your character for at least 50 words. And maybe a story will start to emerge. And maybe none of this will make it into your final draft. Maybe you're going to write a final draft in one shot. Like, I don't know. This is why this is a process. So if you sound stupid in your first paragraph, like I don't care, because that's what writing is. You just gotta start off, you just gotta go. And then later on, we'll figure out if you're gonna keep it or not, right? Don't worry about that. So let me show you an example of what I mean. I'm gonna show you this writing, and then you're going to read it. Are you ready? Read this out loud. Your writing can be totally different from this. But if you notice, this writer described the front door or a door, described something the character owned, something about the place she lived in. But the writer didn't, didn't say how she eats or what her front door looked like, right? She left out those, those specific details. But a writer is going to have to pick and choose the parts. So you wrote and you drew a little bit there. And then now we have this description here. So let's take a little bit closer at it. She came in and carefully sat on the edge of my bed. She didn't just came in and sit down, right? 
Look at the small details there that kind of paint a picture in your head. I want your writing kind of like that. So maybe a story will start to emerge. Maybe none of this will make it into your final draft. Maybe you'll write the final draft in one shot. It's a process, right? But let's focus on the task. At the end of this video, you are going to write about one part of your character for at least 50 words. Don't start the problem yet. Don't tell me the setting yet. Don't introduce any other characters, really. Just one character, at least 50 words. All right, you got this. I'm looking forward to reading what you got.